We are about to embark upon a series of strange and exciting, dangerous adventures. Adventures that will lead us to all parts of the world. Hello and welcome to another Bad Comic Review. This time we're looking at Blood Hunters Issue 1. This is a tie-in to the Blood Hunt event from Marvel Comics in 2024. Now the cover I have is from Greg Land and Frank Diamarda. It got me to buy the book. I thought it could be interesting. I thought we're going to get a cool team up with Hawkeye, Cloak, and Manwolf. No, there are three independent stories. The cover is very deceptive and the art on the cover is vastly superior to the book. I am very disappointed with the Blood Hunt logo if you could call it that it looks more like a really lazy 1995 desktop publishing logo that you would put on a corporate newsletter and thankfully it's minimized on here off to the side but on the regular blood hunt books it just looks incredibly stupid and lazy the main header title looks lazy too it's just angled so i wasn't real impressed with that and at five dollars i expected this to be entertaining the first story is the city that never weeps by mark russell art by bob Quinn, color art by Matt Miller, and that one finds Clip Barton growing a mustache to avoid the police, and he is in a restaurant where the police are currently about to arrest him when a vampire breaks in. So he rounds out a wacky group of locals to fight some vampires, and they crack some silly jokes and talk about food. There's a lot of talk about food and coffee like you usually get at Marvel. I don't know what their weird obsession with eating and drinking is, but it's very unnerving how many books of theirs take place in restaurants or discuss coffee in great detail it's very very odd so there's a lot of lazy talking in here that really didn't need to be there a lot of the caption boxes are just senseless babble that is designed to look like silly banter or i guess it's supposed to be funny anyway or it's supposed to be adding something but it really doesn't this story could have been a lot shorter and it probably would have been a lot better without the stupid mustache that they have to comment on because Ha, ah, he grew a mustache. Oh, that's so wacky. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Ugh. So that was dumb. The art was passable, but not great. And Hawkeye looks very effeminate with his silly mustache. He looks like Geppetto from the Pinocchio cartoon from Disney, mixed with the guy with a white panel van. The second story is Blood Relations, written by Christos Gage, art by Javier Garon, color art by Maury Hollowell. And this is Manwolf and J. Jonah Jameson having a little team up up as they wander around they start off at the apartment and they're apparently going for lunch and then the vampires attack we at least did in the first story get a synopsis of what is going on they did actually explain that so i'm very happy about that and it did have an editorial note referencing blood hunt that's great unfortunately that story sucked and this one isn't any better this one's actually a little bit sillier it doesn't take itself seriously the art looks ludicrously comical at times J. Jonah Jameson has the weirdest facial expressions. Manwolf's head changes shape and size throughout the story, and it's really, really over the top. It could have been a really good story, but instead it's very sappy and simplistic. It's almost written for like eight-year-olds, where they have to have this special bonding moment instead of just having an adventure. It's got to be some father-son thing, and J. Jonah Jameson is always talking to Spider-Man on the phone, and it hurts Manwolf's feelings, and and uh, Man Wolf is apparently just going to abandon his dad in the middle of the vampire attack. It's really, really dumb. And the art is trash. It is just over the top bad art. It really looked very, very indie. The colorist did a pretty decent job, but with Man Wolf's ever changing head shape and J. Jonah Jameson looking very emaciated and free throughout the story, it just really doesn't work. The third story is about Cloak. That's Once More Into the Darkness, Part 1. Written by Erica Schultz, art by Bernard Chang, color by Marcelo Maiolo. This was probably the best art in the book. Everybody still has no lips except for Tandy, so I guess they got that right, but it's sort of the manga faces. There's this weird hybridization that a lot of artists do where they're trying to copy a manga style but still have Western influence. And it works a little better here than it usually does. So Tandy is beset upon by some vampires. Her light daggers can kill vampires 
vampires, so that's a bonus. And she does fight several of them, which is actually a pretty cool sequence. A lot of the caption boxes, which are supposed to be her internal dialogue, are a little over the top at times. And then she comes across a vampire that she recognizes from his mortal life. And of course it involves coffee, because it has to. Everything has to involve coffee. She talks about coffee, she wants a cappuccino, and then she talks about the guy at the coffee shop, and then, oh my gosh, she recognizes this vampire because of coffee, and yeah, uh, uh, there's a guest appearance at the end. The final page is actually the worst, and it's a full page spread where the guest star finally reveals themselves. But overall, the art isn't bad. I don't like her generic hero haircut, because of course she has to have the side of her head shaved to show that, that she's the hero. That's the thing in comics now, is if they have this one side or both sides of their head shaved, they're clearly the hero. And they all look like Hitler Youth, but we don't talk about that anymore. So unfortunately, she suffers from that, but she actually looks feminine otherwise, and her powers are pretty consistent, so they did a pretty good job keeping her largely in character, and the art is probably the best of the three stories. Unfortunately, it's just a middle-of-the-road backup story. So I'm not really impressed with this issue. The paper quality's garbage, like you would expect, for a $5 book from Marvel, and most of the story and art is crap. This is, at best, dollar bin material, and I would have to say I don't think I'd pay more than 50 cents for it. It's not entertaining, it's mostly cringy and poorly written trash. It's mostly something a high schooler would write in a creative writing class to make themselves look pseudo-intellectual and smart to their peers, and it's on that level only. It is not really deep, it's not particularly interesting. The action is very poorly paced through most of the book. If you had to read a issue of Hawkeye with the Hawkeye art that you saw here in the writing, I would never ever buy it. So I would say avoid this unless you get it for 50 cents or less or somebody gives it to you because it's not really worth the time and the characterization is boring and generic. These could have been any heroes talking about their food and their stupid mustache and coffee. But that's pretty much standard fare Marvel these days. Just another lazy Marvel cash grab. And it's not worth reading or seeking out in any respect. But that's going to do it for this one. Thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel if you enjoyed the video please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future reviews if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways links are in the description to various support methods and as always we hope to see you on the next one